welcome to FYP briefing by FOCS FYP team, even though I'm the only one standing here. But still, I'm representing my team, uh, which consists of a few lecturers uh, like Miss Anu and the rest. So I will introduce them later. Yes. Right, before we start, can we settle down, relax? Those who are having lunch, I think it's time to stop lunch at this moment. Alright, thank you. It would be good if you can share the food with the whole class next time. Alright, right. yes. In the names of brotherhood and sisterhood. <laughs> Okay, so by right in front of me, I should see RST, RDS, and RSW Group 1 to Group 3 student. Uh, if there are students from Saturday group, I assume that you have problem on Saturday, but it's okay, no worries. Uh, right, so we will try to do this short, sweet, and simple, but to those who, at, who attended my class before, they know that I like to talk, so this might take two hours juga lah, so depends. <laughs> Okay, so make sure first thing first, let's check whether you are in the right position. Make sure that you are supposed to do your proposal this semester. You are not supposed to do your proposal next semester. If you are supposed to do it next semester, please leave the hall uh, now. Don't waste our space. Alright, if you are here for the right reason, then welcome to FYP. Right, so this is the agenda that we are going to discuss today. We are going to discuss about what is FYP because uh, based on our experience, there are still many students who still don't understand what is FYP, why do they need to do it, and then what's the difference between FYP and class assignment, okay? Uh, I don't like this, but it's okay lah, no worries. Then we will discuss about the process flow, what you need to do for the next one year and a half. One year, one year, five months, starting from today, okay? So this, this journey will be one year plus journey, okay? This is not just one semester journey. You are going to see me only once. The briefing will be done only once. After this, I will not see you again, all right? So make sure that you understand. If you have any question, you ask now, so that your one year journey starting from today will be a smooth journey without any problem. Okay, then we are going to discuss about your responsibility, okay? Uh, what is your responsibility? What is your supervisor's responsibility, so on and so forth? What is the FYP project requirement, the important dates, and the most uh, important thing will be the communication channel. How can we interact with each other even after the uh, briefing session? Okay, moving forward, introduction. So what is an FYP? For three reasons, you are sitting in front of me. Number two, you want to graduate in the next one year and a half. Okay, so FYP basically is a compulsory co compulsory courses for every university student in Malaysia. So you are required to develop or to do a research based on your interest, all right? And then it is one of the requirements for graduation stated by uh, MQA, Ministry of Higher Education. You fail this, you will never be able to graduate, okay? If you need to, if you keep repeating for how many semester, you will not graduate, even though you complete all the other subject. Number two, FYP is basically it's an exercise for you to solve a real world problem using all the skills and knowledge you have gathered for the past one to two years of your time. Starting from diploma up until what you have learned until the end of year four or year three. So we want to see whether you have learned what you should have learned, whether you are able to produce an application like a normal degree student or not. We want to see at what level our graduates will be. Because after graduation, immediately you will go for internship. So you are going to bring our image, you are going to bring your own image, right? Uh, people will say, oh, tell you empty student is like this. It's okay, we can improve. But what? But the problem is that you, because after internship, you will go for career, right? So FYP can become a stepping stone for you to promote your name. Okay, you can show to your internship supervisor, you can show to your put, uh, potential employer, this is what I am capable uh, to do. This is my ability, this is uh, my skill set, okay? Then number three, FYP is to showcase your talent for future employer assessment. Many cases I've seen uh, for the past one or two years when people go for interview, especially uh, computer science graduate, not only they ask you question like a normal interview, but they will ask you to demo FYP project. All right, 
and then to make this more difficult nowadays technical interview also ask you to solve technical problem on the spot they will give you an algorithm they will give you a few problem then you need to solve the problem maybe on the spot or they will give you a few days to solve the problem right so that is the reality that you guys are facing right now no longer interview like what i like what i faced uh, in 19 uh, 2003 2004 okay things are changing right now Okay, moving forward. Okay, so FYP consists of three structures, uh, three, uh, three phases. You are here right now, phase number one. We are going to do idea formulation and also proposal development. Okay, so that will be phase number one. Then continue straight for phase number two. We will do FYP project one. For project one, even though it is just only report writing, but I really suggest that you put you do report writing plus development so that you have more time for FYP2. But there are some students who still do the traditional way. Since they say this is FYP1, I will just want to do report. So report is just chapter 1 to chapter 4. Done. And then they will start the FYP2 when the next semester start. Believe me, you don't have enough time because you have 6 more subject to take right every semester. Uh, for RSW, I think 7 subject right when you do your FYP2. Uh, how do you want to balance your time? Okay, so FYP1, you need to write report for chapter. So initial finding, we also will be asking for a simple prototype using Figma or whatnot. Then phase 3, which is the final phase, you need to do a full project development. Then continue the report with chapter 5 to chapter 7 or chapter 6. Then we will do FYP2 moderation. FYP2 moderation means that you need to demo your project to another lecturer together with your supervisor for evaluation. And then the final, final submission. Okay, so that will be the journey, one year plus journey. Okay, this is a one year plus journey, right? Right, so now category of project, what you can do as a FYP student, so you can do development track. So most of you will be doing this, development track. So you will develop application, mobile app, IoT, uh, machine learning uh, module, whatever. You can develop anything that you want based on your program. Okay, based on your program. Or for those who want to do research or let's say your supervisor is more on the research track, then you might do some kind of study, okay? Even though you do study, okay, what, what kind of research that you can do? You can do for undergraduate level research. You can do comparison, implementation, study of techniques, algorithm, approach and whatnot. You are not to develop a new algorithm. That's not our level. That is more to PhD level. At degree level, when we said about uh, research, we do comparison. Let's say I have algorithm A, algorithm B, I want to show which one is much more faster, just to confirm uh, the technical paper output, for example. Okay, But even though you do research, it is made compulsory by the faculty that you still need to develop a prototype. So faculty has made a, a firm stand on this. Anybody who does research, you still need to develop a simple prototype to demonstrate your research output. We want to see your ability to write code. All right. So don't say that, oh, my FYP only produce research paper. We will not accept that as the final submission. You still need to demo a simple prototype that relates to your research. But for those who choose development track, of course, your development must be complete. We are talking about a complete 360 degree uh, user, uh, usability of the system. Let's say I want to do condo management, but I just want to do visitor module. No way, man. <laughs> All right. If you say I want to do condo management with my team member or alone, you will do everything from scratch, starting from entering the how many block, how many floor, what is the unit number, entering the tenant information, entering all the information until the end one complete system that is our expectation okay mr design i just want to do security uh, monitoring system no it must have both facade it must have both uh, side to the system the user and also the admin okay and then we really encourage you any project that you do here we really encourage if you can think about submitting for competition means that when you develop the app when you develop the project don't just think because i want to 
discuss this particular course. But I'm doing it. Why? Because I want to go for competition, for example. You want to, or for example, let's say you want to do something that has high possibility for industry funding. We can do that. For example, let's say after your FYP2, you say, Mr. Rizwan, uh, is it possible for me to stay in campus? I want to set up a, a startup company. I want to station in CBIF at uh, Block SA. And then I'm, I'm going to work on this particular project. I'm going to search for funding and whatnot. That will be my internship. Yes, you can do that. No problem. If you believe so much that your product can be marketable, can be market to the mass. So why not? Okay. So always think big. Don't just focus on completing the project for the sake of getting A, B, C, D, E. Try to think bigger than that. Because for the past... I've been here for nearly one year plus. I've seen a lot of good case study where there are projects where they got marketable, they got funding, they go for competition and then they win and whatnot. Okay, so try as much as possible, aim for this. Okay, don't just simply do for the sake of ABC or whatnot. Okay, next. Okay, this is a special category. Industry project. Okay, this one is special. Why? Because this is a, a, a special arrangement. Some they are from time to time our commercialization uh, division or our industry division called CBIF, okay CBIF, right? Will uh, advertise project with real client. For example, last semester we have IBLE, we have QNE technology and whatnot. So this company they will come to CBIF and then they say we have a few project we would like the university to develop for us. CBIF will then advertise the project to the faculty and then lecturer will select the project. So if your supervisor uh, is one of the person who joined the project, then you can request from your supervisor that you want to join the project. If your supervisor agree, then you are able to work with a real client with a real project. But be careful, this project is very challenging because their time frame is a little bit, is a bit different. There is a possibility you are going to start coding immediately after you join the project. So meaning that, let's say you are supposed to do FYP1 report, but at the same time, you need to write code for the client. So if you are up for the challenge, if you really want to see whether you are able to do it or not, then I really welcome you to join this particular category, industry project. Okay, so this is just a special category. Lah. Ask your supervisor. You cannot approach CBIF directly, you must approach your supervisor and ask him. Let's say your supervisor say, oh, I'm not interested to do industry project. Then that's it lah. You don't have opportunity to join industry project. Okay, for grading purposes, there are three categories. So your supervisor will grade you for the proposal, project one report, project two report, product, and also commitment. Commitment means that how, how you interact with your supervisor, how many times you meet your supervisor. It's quite normal case. We seen from time to time a student disappear after proposal, and then come back one day before presentation. <laughs> Definitely, the supervisor will not give up. There are cases where we fail that kind of student. Failing FYP is rare, but it can happen. Uh, don't say all oh, FYP one. There's FYP. There's no way I can fail. No, it can happen, but rare. Alright, but getting C plus is a lot. Okay, just to remind you lah. Okay, then we have proposal moderator. So this semester, when you submit your proposal in week five, another lecturer will view your uh, proposal and then they will give mark. So that marks will contribute towards your FYP one uh, marks. I will not explain detail in this because you can look at the rubric uh, in the FYP hub. Okay, then we have FYP two moderator. Okay, FYP2 moderator. Okay, now, for this case, every lecturer are required to select 50% of the total students under his supervision. Let's say if I have 14 students, I will select 7 students or 3 groups, 1 individual or whatnot, based on random or based on certain selection method. So that student need to present in front of another lecturer your marks then will come also from the other lecturer. How about the other seven students? The other seven students will be solely 100% uh, 
by the supervisor. Okay. So for me, if you ask me, better you go for moderation than you don't go for moderation. At least you can get some extra idea about what your project is, uh, your project's capability. Questions up to that. That is introduction to FYP. By the way, don't consider FYP as a subject because we don't have class, we don't have briefing, we don't have meetup after this session. It's a freelance development project. I consider it as a freelance development project. You guys are freelance developer, developing a project for yourself for the next one year, five weeks. Okay? Okay? Right? So don't create a project that is too small and don't create a project that is too big. I will talk about that later. Okay, process flow. What you need to do after this. So, now. So for phase one, all of you has been assigned a supervisor. So you are in a group where your supervisor is assigned automatically. There are other group who will get there who can choose their own supervisor, but this group is not lucky. <laughs> 2023-09, your supervisor is already assigned. You will get your supervisor by the end of the session. Right, first, do you need to meet your supervisor immediately and then discuss whatever possible idea for your project. If you are in group, we want to see a clear separation in terms of module. For those who register two person per group, we want to see module A, module B, a very clear separation. And then the, the weight, the, 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 the scale of the module must be equal for both. We do not want to see one person do a lot of things, one person just free ride. Okay, that, because later on, all marking will be done individually. All report must be submitted individually even though you do group work. Okay, at the end of the day, FYP is still an individual work. Okay, and then prepare the proposal and then submit form one and form three uh, in week five. Okay, so you have five, you have three weeks to do this, three to four weeks to do this. Then phase two, your FYP one will start in February next year. So you need to prepare your FYP one report chapter one until chapter four. For those who do research, it's time to get your initial finding. And then for those who do development, you need to do some mock-up development that need to be put inside chapter four. Then last phase, last, uh, last, last leg of your journey, full development activity, this will start in May next year. Alright, then you need to prepare your, you need to continue your report chapter 5 to chapter 7. Then you need to do moderation if you are selected and then your final submission. Okay, your final submission. Okay, what to submit? Phase 1, Form 1, Student Detail, Form 2, Your Proposal, Form 3 is the Proposal Moderation Form. Phase 2, FYP Report, Chapter 1, Introduction, Chapter 2, Literature Review, Chapter 3, Methodology, Requirement Analysis, Chapter 4, Design. For those who want to do gaming, then your Chapter 3 will be different. Chapter 3 will be your game game storyline or something, or uh, uh, storyboard. I will prepare you a document to show the difference between chapter 1 and 4 between game, normal application and research. Okay, uh, don't worry about it. Then uh, phase 3, you need to do the complete system. You need to submit FYP2 report. FYP2, FYP2 report, basically FYP1 report plus 2 more chapter. 2 or 3 chapter, depends on your supervisor. 1 poster and a few documents called abstract and keyword list document. Then all documents are individually submitted, even though you do group works, okay? So do not copy your group works report, okay? Your group made report. Okay, questions up to that point? Yes? Uh-huh. This same week five. Uh, maybe my voice is not clear. Your proposal, this is week two. Your proposal need to be submitted either week five or week six this semester. I will give you the deadline later. This semester. Alright, we have seven weeks, right? Currently, we are in week two, week five, or week six this semester. 
proposal. The proposal is just like five pages long. So don't worry. Okay? Short one. Alright, five pages report. I think you can do it in one week. Uh, uh, one week, yeah. Should be nice. Proposal also individual, yes. Okay, but there are certain, uh, but that one depends on supervisor. Like those who are under my supervision, there are certain chapter in FYP2, I do allow my students to share because they are talking about the same thing. For example, objective, target market, those, those kind of things. But introduction, uh, why you do this project, uh, that one should be individually stated. Okay, are there questions related to this? Your journey start this semester. Your proposal sent submit by this fifth. So means that you have three, three to four weeks to prepare your proposal. Five, uh, five pages only, not much. Okay. All right. Cool. Then questions. Done. Questions. All right. If not, then your responsibility and the supervisor responsibility. Okay, your super uh, okay, find a supervisor, no need. We already prepared this for you. Uh, to help and to ease your journey. <laughs> Alright. You need to meet minimum six times with your supervisor. Okay, for long semester. For your FYP1 and FYP2 report, there are marks for commitment. Commitment and responsibility. Minimum you must meet six times with your supervisor and it must be recorded in a in a meeting log. Okay, the template for the meeting log is already prepared for you. You just fill out the form. Follow the given timeline, develop all the deliverables and committed to the project. Okay, the last one is the most difficult part. Commitment. Many students, they ignore the whole thing. FYP 1, one week before submission. FYP 2, one week before submission. Oh, sorry. Normal. It's quite normal. How do we know it's normal? Because we can see the final outcome. Right? When they start presenting immediately, it looks like a year one, year one, first semester uh, programming. Right? Immediately we know this has been done like two, three days ago. Uh, usually for moderation, we will end the moderation immediately. Lah. No need to waste time. Okay? Supervisor. Okay, this is there's a lot of controversy on this part. Okay, let, let us be clear today. Your supervisor only responsible to give direction and guideline about the project flow and the requirement. Number two, advise and guide and revise the content for each chapter of the report. Moral support only. Alright? And technical support very minimum. Because there is one case a student complained. Uh, the supervisor doesn't want help, does not, does not want to help him coding. I say, whose project is that? <laughs> right. If you think your supervisor need to do code for you, so if I do PhD, my supervisor should do my PhD report for me. Yeah. Right? No way. Eh? Your supervisor, when you come, oh, sir, I do not know how to do this. Okay, Rizwan, you go to this website, you go to this website, or you meet this person. That's all. That's the only guy I can give you. Right. Mr. Rizal, I don't have money to buy this product. Uh, that one depends on your supervisor. Uh, if your supervisor is generous, now nah, 100 ringgit. If not, uh, buy a cheaper product. Uh, right? Okay, things like that. And then moral support. They say your supervisor most of the time give direction. For example, when you demo, for example, like my student for FYP2, we meet every week. So every week there must be outcome. So from that outcome, I will tell them, okay, add this, remove that, add that, remove that. Alright, uh, so direction, just to make sure your project is complete. Okay, don't ask for technical support, aka coding. <laughs> of course, uh, Mr. Rizal, I, I've done this code, uh, is it okay? Then I look at the output, okay, okay lah. But if that not okay, then not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's quite normal. For example, there are situations, for, for example, let's say I'm not the expert and then we don't have the expert in this university, then I may redirect you to may, maybe my friend in another university. I, I, did, I did that sometime. Let's say you do something that is totally beyond my capability and my expertise, and even there is no lecturer in town, you empty do that. Uh, I will guide you and assign or maybe set up an appointment with another lecturer from another university. That's that's normal. 
Okay? Oh yeah, by the way, your supervisor is the main reference but that doesn't mean you cannot talk to other lecturer. Hmm. But don't talk bad don't talk bad about your supervisor because that person will tell bad the supervisor. <laughs> Hi, so please eh. Let's say let's say for example you you Okay, let's say your supervisor like me, I'm I'm more to software quality. But you want to know more about coding, then you meet another lecturer. Fine. It's okay. That's how things work, right? Because you guys are still a student of the UMT. You have access to all our lectures. Okay, lesson learned. These are the things that I gather from mistakes made by my students and also other students for for the for many years of my life. Number one, FYP, they say it's just a subject. So when you put when you put a perspective it's a subject, so nature by nature, you will do it last minute. Okay, but if you think that I have a client, who is your client? Your client is Star UMT. You are a freelance developer, so the process will continue. Trust me, but if you think ah, this is just a subject, it's okay lah, no worries. Three weeks before submission, we do. Remember, you have subject next semester and uh, semester May. Be careful. <coughs> Okay, commitment, dedication, self-learning, time management. Remember, supervisor is not responsible for any technical assistance, aka coding. Excuses. Okay, now this is normal also. Mr. Riza, I'm so sorry I cannot present today. My my, my machine crash, my laptop crash, my backup server crash, the whole TM crash. <laughs> Mr. Riza, I didn't sleep. Mr. Riza, I haven't learned this. Excuses like that are not acceptable at all. Not saying that we are not sympathy with you, we sympathy and we empathy with you. But since you promised me this program in your proposal, so I expect it to appear in after one year. Meaning that if you if you promise me an, an application where the language you never learned before, it means throughout that one year you need to learn that language on your own. After one year, the project must appear running. No box. Mr. Rizwan, I, I never learned this subject. If you never learn this particular language, then why do you propose this program in the first place? Right. So be careful. But it's quite normal also for you to learn something new on your own. As I said, those who got A are those who really demonstrate a very high self-initiative very high creativity in problem solving, right? They deserve A. But those who just do so-so, then don't marah lah if your supervisor also gives so-so, right? It's a win-win situation lah, okay? Right, focus for two semester, so two semester and a half. Be proud of your work, okay? This is one thing that I think many people miss out lah. After FYP, many people, they throw away their FYP project. Don't do that. Why? Because they are not proud of their project. If you are proud of your project, you will work very hard and then you will publish your work in GitHub, you will publish your work in iOS, uh, App Store, Apple Store, Google Store, whatever store lah. Right? I really encourage you, develop the app and then by before you go for graduate uh, internship, publish the app. Let people use it. See how many people would like to use the app. Then you can see whether your app has value or not. That's how you can measure your, your performance, okay? And yeah, FYP1 basically, FYP marks the beginning of student transition from university to a career, career environment. Right, questions so far? There's a random question here. I think I think it's Okay guys, okay guys, let's say in project one, in project one, in your report you say I'm going to develop this app using Python. 
Then after a few more study, oh, actually the app can be easily developed using Java. You are allowed to change. Don't stick to one. Yeah, exactly. So what you need to do when you do FYP2, just change your report a bit in chapter 2. Okay? Change your report says that I'm going to use Java. That's it. Simple as that. Okay, study domain. Right, so based on MQA, okay, this is not our regulation, eh? Faculty doesn't put this regulation. Based on MQA, FYP must reflect the study program. So, the lucky one, the only lucky one is RSD, RSW. You can do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because RSD, RSW, you, our, not our lah. The program only allow, only requests you if you do any project, but as long as you do analysis, design, testing, RSW, RSD, tick, done. Uh, okay, let's say RS, uh, RDS, data science, you do web application like a Netflix. You do requirement study, analysis, design and whatnot, rejected. Because it doesn't have elements of data science. Okay, so for RST, RSW, congratulations, the world is yours. Okay, <laughs> okay. alright, so RST, anything? Software, network, information management, so actually, RST is the most free, free person, lah. do whatever you want. Okay, uh, RIS, information security is a must. RDS, data science, okay, RSW, uh, anything. Okay. Questions? Questions? So RS, uh, RDS, your project must have connection to data science. Regardless in any form, it must have element of data science. It's okay if you don't do requirement analysis, design, testing or whatnot, it's okay. But it must have elements of data science. RSW, you can do data science, but you must show that you have done analysis, design, uh, coding, testing. That's all. Okay. Questions about domain? Clear? Good, ah. Go, go. <laughs> okay, compulsory requirement. Okay, let's try finish this uh, another uh, 15 minutes. Right, minimum meeting, six meeting with your supervisor for FYP1 and FYP2. For the proposal, depends lah. Usually we don't meet a lot. Uh, we just meet once or twice, that's it. Okay, for research or development, you must have a working application for research. Again, for research. I would like to uh, to, em to emphasize this one again. Because the faculty decided for research track, you still need to develop a prototype. If you just produce research paper, it will not be accepted. Okay? Must include all... Okay, this is another argument bring forward by the IOT team. Mr. Rizwan, IOT team, there is no UI. But in the rubric, there is mark for UI and GUI, right? So in your case, what you need to do, you need to show us uh, in a simple console, the data that you receive and then the data that you pass from the sensor to the to another sensor or whatnot. Just a simple console, black and white console also uh, also acceptable, just to show the movement of the data. Enough for your GUI. Okay? For IoT, uh, you need to present by bringing all the items. Let's say my student, one, one student currently doing IoT, so during demo, he need to bring everything, wire up nicely in a, in a box and everything. Okay, don't bring in loose item. No, don't do that. Okay, what else? Uh, RST, RSW. Okay, the rest are all the same lah. Oh, sorry. Uh, module separation and also no plagiarism. Okay, no, no plagiarism. Okay, date and submission. This is your journey for the next one year. I don't, I don't put the exact date yet because there might be some changes. Okay, there might be some changes. Uh, sorry, 202 202405. Sorry, eh? my fault. FBI, FBI1, FYP1, FYP1. 
Uh, FYP tu. See, this is what happen when you copy paste. <laughs> right, FYP tu, 2024-05. Sorry. Okay, submission date and other deadline is subject to change without prior notice. Okay, always check your email and also the Google Classroom. Alright, and then for comments and guidelines, send your product to your supervisor in stages. So, I really suggest for FYP 1, FYP 2, don't submit your project one shot. No, your supervisor doesn't have time to check. You finish chapter 1, you send to your supervisor. Then proceed with chapter 2. While waiting for your supervisor comment, proceed with chapter 2. Do it by stages. Don't, don't hantar one shot for chapter and then ask your supervisor to comment in two days. <laughs> Alright? Don't do that, okay? Uh, PT your supervisor. Okay, communication. These are the team members for FOCS, FYP team. The normal people lah. Nanti much lah. Okay. Shh. Eh, 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 eh. Your main reference is your supervisor. If you have problem, if you have question, ask your supervisor. If your supervisor cannot answer the question, then you talk to me or any of the other uh, FYP team member. Okay? Talk to us. Don't keep quiet, eh? Okay, for example, there is a case. Let's say your supervisor push you too much. Push you too much until that you don't have time to do other subject. Then your supervisor asking you to do something outside the boundary of the project, asking you to do his work, uh, then report to us immediately so that we can arrange the solution for you. Don't keep quiet. Okay, don't keep quiet. Right? Okay. FYPT ta and then FYP then you put comment. FYP ta you empty make people depressed. No, don't do that. <laughs> Before you put that comment, meet me first. Meet me first. I'll make sure that you will not be depressed. <laughs> you die terus. Okay. Okay, so this, okay, by the way, the, the Google Classroom is still not ready 100%, but the list of supervisor is already in the Google Classroom. So you can see who's your supervisor. We assign randomly. What? Continue. You want me to show your supervisor name here? No. No. Alright, you can, you can log into the Google Classroom now. I already put up your supervisor name, so that's your supervisor. Okay? We give the supervisor random, so no pilih kasih or no uh, special arrangement or whatnot. Okay. 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 